Welcome to an all new episode of the Lisa Ann Experience. I am your host, Lisa Ann, and I am so thankful to be in your ear. And right now, this is a very unique episode. Obviously, when you choose, if you choose to watch this on YouTube, you will see a set that you've never seen before. A very lime green wall is behind me. Very Euro colors in this hotel room because I am still in Switzerland. It is our last night in Zurich, and we have traveled through this beautiful country, which I plan to recap with you right here, and it has been magnificent. Now, yes, I could have waited till I got home to give you a full episode, but I thought I really wanted to be in the vibe, how I was feeling after we just got into this room 10 minutes ago from our last train ride, and go through kind of the steps of everywhere we went, and when I say we, I mean at just letter K content creator, video editor, sound editor, editor for my podcasts, both the Lisa Ann Experience and Dudes Do Better, musician, like Kay does a bit of it all. And Kay has been on this journey with me all through Switzerland. It's been incredible. So let me just start from the jump with saying this was my bye week from the NFL. Those of you that follow the NFL, they know, you know, you know, teams get a bye week. Uh, yes, I'm sitting on a bed I have a nightstand right here and I put a suitcase on top of it so I could be elevated. I'm using the sunlight from the window, which is why I wanted to hustle and get this done as soon as we got home from the train, because I knew once it got a bit darker, we'd be really running into some limits with light. Not really sure how the sound is going to come out. But again, this is the international edition. This is fresh off the last train back into Zurich before tomorrow morning. We hop right back on a plane and get back to the States. So I came here for Ecstasia. Ecstasia is like a show like Sexpo is in Australia, like Exotica is in the United States. They're trade shows that have all different types of performers, uh, vendors who sell all kinds of adult stuff, toys, all kinds of fun stuff, stage acts, whether it's male dancers, female dancers. Here was a lot of bondage. Of course, the Swiss are very into that. So I've been really fortunate to travel the world. I'm laying over tomorrow in Helsinki. And when we lay over there, it's funny because I did a show like this in Finland back in 2008 or 2009. So I have traveled multiple countries doing these shows. And what's fascinating as me is, first of all, everything is so global, thanks to the internet. So people know me everywhere. And there's a bit of a language barrier, but enough that you can ask somebody their name to sign an autograph for them. Maybe you get to have a little bit of conversation. Some people speak multiple languages. Some speak very limited English, but you hear names that you've never heard before. And what strikes me when I'm doing these signings is somebody will come up and they'll be like, my name is Andy. And you're like, oh my gosh, Andy is just such a normal name. I don't even have to ask you how to spell it. But normal is Andy being a common name in the US, probably not so common in other countries and probably not even his full name, maybe an abbreviation. So we started this journey last Thursday uh, and we flew together from JFK to London Heathrow was our layover. So we got to JFK early. Kay had flown up from Nashville. I met Kay at the airport. I had a wild Uber ride. I'd like to add this in because this is a story worth telling. What I'm noticing right now in New York City, and let me warn all of you that may or may not be traveling to New York City or you live there, you now have to declare which route you want to take because I prefer to take the tunnel. I understand there's a toll and I understand a lot of people are going to try to avoid the tunnel and they're going to look at maps. And I think what people don't realize is sometimes the map is not the best way to go. If you're a driver, you have to be prepared and be patient that quite often you're going to sit in traffic. That's just your job, right? But they think that they can maneuver around and take side streets, which as a passenger in the back seat makes you a little car sick, right? And also you're going into neighborhoods that you don't recognize. And 
it's a little alarming, right? When you know the route, it's kind of comforting. Even if you're only cruising at like 20 miles an hour on traffic, you know the route. You're just like, okay, I know that billboard. Okay, oh, they changed that billboard. Or, oh, we're going through here. Or, oh, this. So, boy, I'm glad I remembered this because it was wild. I was texting K footage of where I was. So, for my very first time ever, I took surface streets, the entire route to JFK. When I hit the Uber at like 310, I even went for the Uber black car, which is a ton more money to go to JFK. But I was like, you know, I got these bags. I want to get there. Usually they're better drivers. So like I'm doing this. But when I got in the car, I made an epic fail. I was tightening up some loose ends, just things because I knew I'd be traveling, emailing, letting people know, hey, I'm going to be out of the country. And before I looked up, we were going through Central Park. And I was like, this is not a good sign because where I'm from, where I live, the best thing, the route is voop, 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 voop. You go through the tunnel, a little toll, you're on the freeway. It's like the 430, 465, whatever the freeway is. It's like two freeways to JFK. So you take one, you veer over there, but I know the route. By the time I look up, I'm like, oh no, this is not good. So I'd say to him like, which way are we going? Oh, we're going the way that's gonna be the fastest. When I initially hit the Uber at 310, said I was going to be there at 410. Three is a good time. It's not a lot of rush hour traffic, right? This is easy. How, how you know, K's there early. We're, our flight's not to like 855, but we're going to brainstorm all the things that we want to do on this trip. So we're going to get there early, have dinner, just catch up, right? I got there like after 5 p.m. These surface streets sitting in five lane surface streets with traffic lights that are five minutes. It adds up. First, the guy tries to act like he doesn't understand English. Then he tries to act like he doesn't know his way around New York City. Then I'm pulling up all of the other maps. Then I'm talking to Kay. I'm texting Kay like, what do I do? And Kay's like, do you feel comfortable just getting out and starting over with another Uber? But these were surface streets I had never been on. And they were areas that I just didn't know. I didn't see a lot of taxis. I didn't see accessibility where I'd be like, will I be comfortable with all of these bags standing out here on this random corner in the deep part of Queens that I've never seen before? So the long and the short of it is when I finally got to the airport, I said to Kay, Kay, you know what's great? After being on the road for so many years, if something bad goes wrong at the beginning of the trip, I always say like, this is great because we got the bad thing out of the way because normally like when something's awful to kick off a trip, then that just like, oh great, everything else is going to go great is the way I look at it. I know a lot of other people would look at it as, oh, this is a sign for the trip. But see, when I was on the road for years, feature dancing, if I would get picked up at the airport, like let's say the driver forgot or he was two hours late, I would think to myself, I bet you I'm going to have a really nice hotel. And I usually did. If I would get the hotel and a hotel was awful, I would say, oh, I bet you the dressing room is really good. And it usually was. So it's like, it's like the balance of life, right? You're balancing the scales and it normally does balance right back out. You have to be willing to accept and lean in. But so that was a bit of a chaotic situation, unnecessary. And now when I get into an Uber moving forward or a taxi moving forward, going to the airport, before I even get my ass in that damn vehicle, I'm out of face to face with my driver. Here's the deal. These are the exact streets that I want to take. This is the tunnel and toll that I want to go through. This is the, can we agree that we're doing this? Because otherwise I'll cancel the ride and I'll go with somebody that does. That is my new approach because it was such a stop and go. And then he was kind of weaving in and out. And he finally decided to get onto a freeway but realized he didn't know what freeway he got on. And we're sitting in the middle of this freeway. Luckily for like a minute, there was no cars coming. And I'm like, bro, you got to make a decision. Are you going right or left? He veered so hard that one of my ear pods flew across his car and I lost it. So I have one ear pod now. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll be buying new air pods at the airport because of this Uber driver, which I have not filed a formal complaint about yet, but I will. So that's how the trip started. So I get to the airport, airport to CK. I'm short one AirPod. I've lost an hour of my life with this driver who was not, shouldn't have been driving for Uber or the Uber Black. And I'm super excited. So now the first stop after we have dinner, we go through, get on the plane. Uh, we both like window. So we're sitting uh, 
front and back from each other so we could both sleep, slept, slept like a baby, but I was excited to land at Heathrow Airport. I love Heathrow Airport. Terminal 5 is my favorite. Air American flies into Terminal 5 because at Terminal 5, you have Gordon Ramsay's restaurant called Plain Food, P-L-A-N-E. And you can take these bags onto the plane, which we didn't need to. We just ate there. We had a beautiful breakfast. We shop duty free. I love to buy perfumes. Perfumes are so much cheaper that come from Europe that then charge so much more in the US. I bought two amazing perfumes, k bought perfume. We wandered around. I like the layover because you get time to stretch your legs, get a meal outside of the plane, do a little window shopping. We watched walk just in and out of a bunch of stores and then got on our flight here. Landed in Zurich. And I will say I was surprised. Zurich is a smaller airport than I expected. And the way they had it that day was there was some gates open and there were gates closed. And where the gates were closed, there was no stores or anything open. So it just felt very quiet. Walked through the airport. Our driver, uh, Tom, who was going to be meeting us, was down the way. So we had to kind of, you know, finagle a little bit because I had to log on. You first land internationally. You got to do the settings on your phone. Set up your, yeah, I had my WhatsApp going. So all of that. We meet our driver, Tom, who is one of the most fabulous men. When you travel on the road, you find people that are just so good at what they do. They're good at making you feel comfortable. They've met tons of celebrities. They're used to doing this. They have all the little tips of restaurants and places to walk and things to do and things to see. Even though we had our own ideas of everything that we wanted to do while we were here, Tom was, he is DJ and VIP host on his WhatsApp. And when you get into his Jaguar, he's got his music going. Just a really happy, 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 sweet man. And I had already talked to Rolf from Ecstasia to ask if I could borrow the driver from that was taking care of us for the show on our first free day, which was Monday. So we got to like bond with Tom over the three days of going back and forth to the show. And we're super excited to be able to take a car ride through the countryside. We could have very easily taken a train, which would have taken an hour, but I was more interested in doing a four to a five hour journey where we could stop and take different photos. So let's not fast forward to that. Let's get where we are right now. So we get here to the hotel. We're a day early. Like to get in and get acclimated. I never like to stress about showing up at a trade show like the day that I'm going to be at the booth. I want to get a good night's sleep. I want to get in a little bit of a walk, kind of learn my whereabouts. And it just so happened that the hotel for the show was right across the street from the venue where the show was. So it makes it really convenient to just walk across the street, even though Tom drove us so that we could go into the back entrance, which was right by my dressing room, my little break area. So that worked out really, really well. The people that put on this show, including the security for this show, which is run by a man named Martin, who I became very fond of. And uh, Martin had a great group of people working for him, really more security than I've probably ever seen at one of these shows, which made me feel incredibly safe. But it's weird to think about feeling incredibly safe in probably one of the safest places I've ever visited. If you know anything about Switzerland, People will tell you that the president travels by train without any security. Uh, security does not seem to be an issue here. It's clean. It's beautiful. People are very mindful, very quiet. No one's yelling on the street. Like So there I was with more security than I've ever seen at a trade show run by Martin. And I got to meet a lot of his staff as they came over during my three days at the show, kind of one-on-one -on -one to greet me, to get a photo. Um, and they had women as security as well, which was perfect because when it was time for me and Kay to go to the ladies room, we legit felt like the president because she would, the security would clear the room, make everybody went outside so we could go, you know, all clear kind of thing. Like really was awesome. Heidi, uh, took care of us for the first two days. Heidi and her husband both worked security for Martin. So just made a lot of great friends along the way. And over looking at how this show was run, I was like, wow, this is really a well put together show. All the performers are really excited to be here. They had these awesome food trucks inside to make sure that the talent definitely gets meals every day, which were complimentary through the show, like little things that you pick up 
in different cultures of how they want to make you feel so welcome for coming all this way to be a part of their show. So you'll get to see pretty soon a video that Kay put together, a little behind the scenes of the three days of me signing at Ecstasia. Everybody was incredibly nice. I had a nice long line all three days, which was really cool. Getting to meet fans from you know, different countries is quite an honor that everybody knows of you. Uh, had a couple really great sports conversations, and it's neat to know how many people in different countries follow American football because that was one of the things I found very difficult. So though it was my bye week, like all NFL teams get a bye week, I felt I also deserved a bye week. Though it was my bye week, I still had to set my lineups. I still had to pay attention to news which there is a ton of it, NFL trade deadline, NBA steep dash, like there's so much news happening. And when you're on this different time zone, you're kind of catching everything up late, right? You're, you're like so many injuries this week. I didn't get to use Jamar Chase in my fantasy football lineups, but I stayed engaged. And luckily to the amount of amazing shows there are and social media follows, you know, in, in American broadcast in the sports world, like you don't really need to be paying attention and you still won't miss anything. You just go to your trusted sources. You look through their timeline, bam, 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 go to your app. It gives you all the updates. You can just click on the player on Yahoo and really, you know, get all the details you need. Then of course I still listen to Pat McAfee every day. Uh, because why wouldn't I? Because that keeps me really, really honed in. And it's such a routine of mine. And that gives me that feeling of like total normalcy. So it was great to have some sports conversations. And while we were not at the show, because the show is evenings, uh, we made sure that we got out and did some excursions. So of course, like that's super important. And what is the most important thing in Switzerland? Chocolate. You knew it. You knew it. You, you were saying it. You think Swiss chocolate, right? Uh, which Kay had some of the best hot chocolate Kay's ever had. I myself too. So our first day excursion was Friday during the day because we knew we'd be at the event at night and we went to the Lint home of chocolate. So it's like a museum, kind of how it's made, the history of chocolate, uh, shot content for a YouTube video that is available on my YouTube the real Lisa Ann, just like all of my other platforms, the real Lisa Ann, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll see the updates of everything we did while we were here. So we did the Lint Home of Chocolate, which was awesome. Um, went, got out in the city and shot some photos and then went in to the event that night. Now on Saturday, I had a little bit of a longer day. So we decided we would just lay low on Saturday, take a walk around Zurich. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention night one. We went to Old Town Zurich and just walked around down by the water. You may have seen some photos that I posted on Instagram, again, at the release Sand, and just really like scoped everything out, noticed everybody on their bikes, had a beautiful dinner, uh, and just kind of got ourselves acclimated, go to bed early, got the next day. So Saturday was the day where I had to do two times on stage, getting asked questions, fan questions, interactions with the host, and then two times at the booth. So we're like, you know what, let's lay low Saturday. We'll just walk around our immediate area, discover over here, you know, get a snack, you know, kind of wander. So that's what we did. I found that cool chess set, uh, took some pictures with it in one of the city centers. And then on Sunday, we got up and we went to the FIFA Museum. So many of my followers asked me to get more into soccer. So I was like, this is a no brainer. This ties in kind of my sports thing with learning like the history thing of soccer with seeing all of the different trophies, really an incredible museum, something just cool to do. These are just fun things to get you more connected with where you're visiting. And what I notice when I'm traveling like this is the driver always says to me, wow, you're one of the few performers or stars that comes in and like does all these things. Well, it's easier now than ever with Uber because you can easily get a ride to where you're going. Uh, and you can easily look these things up on the internet. Whereas I can remember when I first started traveling in the nineties, I would have to pull all of those brochures from the front desk at the hotel. And I know you remember those brochures. There would be like this Oak wood, kind of thing nailed to the wall. 
and it would have everything from the local zoo to all the local events. And you would just like grab one of everyone and then you take them in your room and you read and you look at the map and then you have to go to a regular map. Now you're just like, here I am. We're in Zurich. What do we want to do? So that video from the FIFA museum is also already up there on my YouTube channel. K is such a whip. We go in, we do our content creation, we get back. Kay's already editing. I'm getting ready to go to the show. Like it just, just works, 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 works. So got to do two excursions before Monday. So the last night of the show, Sunday night, got to say goodbye to everybody. And there's something that happens when you're on tour and you leave all of your people behind. Now, mind you, having Kay, I'm not leaving all of my people behind, but like you're out of your element. You're out of your world. You're not at home. You don't have the convenience of of home. You very much bond with whoever drives you, sits with you in your dressing room, walks you out to your booth. You instantly become, okay, these are my people here. Uh, This is who I know. This is who I would go to if I needed something. These are the people that are keeping me safe. And it's amazing how in 72 hours on the road, you become attached and it becomes this, we call it like tour depression. When the event is over, the disconnect that you feel from the people that you were just so emotionally invested in and so close with and so together with, and you've you've bonded with these people and they become part of you. And then all of a sudden you're saying goodbye, which can be very emotional. And I remember this from the road. I remember crying, leaving places just because I liked the people so much. And so it was sad to say goodbye to Martin, who now I'll keep in touch with forever on WhatsApp. We didn't have to say goodbye to Tom because he was going to be driving us the very next day. So on Sunday, we got back to the room. We walked up to an Italian restaurant down the street and sat outside at a bite to eat because a lot of things are closed here on Sundays. So the restaurants that we looked up to go to, we like walked up to the door and I'm like, well, there's no one in there. Okay. The door's locked. It's closed. And then we heard from Tom that, oh yeah, a lot of places are closed here on Sundays. It's kind of off season as well. So we went to this beautiful Italian restaurant, sat outside and ate, had a great meal and we're prepared for, Hey, we're packing smaller bags because what I did was I kept us in the original hotel in Zurich because I have all of my gear, my, all my wardrobe, no need to lug that with us on the rest of the trip. So we kept this room here. So what we were going to do was minimize our stuff for the next leg of our journey. And the next leg of our journey was going to start with a drive. Then there was going to be multiple trains. And then there would finally be the train coming back here where I am right now in Zurich. So we wanted, I really wanted to see Luzerne. Everyone had told me there were two places everyone told me to see. Luzerne and Interlaken. Everyone said, you have to go to Luzerne, you have to go to Interlaken. I was like, okay. So I spoke with Tom about it. Hey, this is where we'd like to go. If you can get us there one way, I know the train ride is only an hour back. I'll book the train back. So, okay. And, and Tom says, you know, do you, are you in a hurry? Like, can I, I'm like, we are not in a hurry. We don't get to check into our hotel room till 3 PM. We're meeting you for breakfast at nine. Take us wherever you want to take us. We want to see everything that you think is magical. And we want to see everything that only really a local knows about, unless you were to hire a tour guide. But you're not going to see this from the train. You're not going to see it in a touristy trap situation because it's more of, you know, something that you would know about. So we ended up taking the most magical tour. This trip will be covered in the final uh, video that you'll see that put came out to, put out today. So again, on my YouTube channel. But we're going on these roads, and Switzerland is exactly what you see. You know, it's green. There's these cottages with these beautiful shutters. Everybody has flowers outside of their windows, on their porches and plants. And there's so much love for nature and colorful settings. And it's still fall here. It won't really be winter till what I was told early December, which we expected it to be much more like winter, but we got to enjoy this beautiful fall. So not only are we seeing these 
beautiful, beautiful little villages and then nothing but like one farmhouse surrounded by acres and acres of land. And then you come up onto another little village and these windy, beautiful little roads. But we're seeing the leaves changing. We're seeing these trees. And just in the furthest distance, the first mountain that's snow capped, the very first tiny bit of snow at that elevation, but everything else is still very much alive. It's still not winter here. So the first place we stopped was the most incredible church I've had the fortune of walking into. And you will see some of the photos again on my social media, the release Anne. And this church was in Eyes in lock. Oh, now I feel I need to step off, which I'll do because you don't mind. You're right here. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll wait. If you're listening, you'll wait too because this is what road life, uh, the international edition of a podcast is like. So it's not going to be as perfect as if I were at home and I had my notes in front of me and, and my light and everything else. It's going to be as it is right now as I read this to you and also. Please be mindful that my pronunciation is probably not as great as it should be. And I know that you understand that. And of course, now I'm not logged into the internet on that phone, but I want to give proper, proper credit to where proper credit is due. And here is the name of the church, the city. So it's Cluster Eisendeln, and that is K-L-E-S-T-E-R. E-I-N-S-I-E-D-E-L-N. That's the city. The church is Cloister Kirch Eisendeln. And it's the grand church where you could do the grand tour, where there is a black Madonna out front. And when we entered this church, first of all, when you pull up, you pull up, you know, you're going through these windy little villages. Everything is so beautiful, so beautiful. And all of a sudden there's this church that is like massive and it's up on this hill. And just, it's like the most grand thing to see. Like we're blown away. Like our mind is blown right away. Kay is like, oh, I have to fly my drone here. I have to get drone footage here. I'm like, yeah, you do. You have to get drone footage here. I mean, come on. Uh, so the drone footage, putting the drone up there and seeing everything from all the way around was so beautiful. And then uh, walking into the church and just like the painting, the ceiling, the structure. And we were lucky. It was a Monday. So it wasn't really busy. So we were able to take photos on the steps where there's like nobody there but us. And it was just magical. We stopped at a little, there was a little gift shop right off the side. And I thought this is a great place to buy a couple postcards. I bought a cross, a little bracelet, just to have something to remember this stop. And this was the first stop in this journey. So the second stop was probably about another 30, 40 minutes. And we arrive on this picturesque view of this lake. And it's supposed to be as a portion of the lake, Lake Zurich, that is magical. And when you look out, and I took this video, and when I looked at the video on my phone, over the center spot of the lake where the sun was just shining, shining perfectly, there's this cloud formation. It looks like two lions, like really beautiful. Like if you blow it up on the phone, you're like, whoa, that looks like it was put in there in post. And I just took this video with my phone. So we sat there, uh, had, had a cup of coffee. I think I had a glass of wine. Uh, we just sat there and looked out all the chairs at the cafe we sat at, faced the lake. So you could just look out at the lake, see all the birds. There were little, they give you little snacks like everyone does in Europe when you have a glass of wine. We're feeding the little birds in front of us while Kay's flying the drone. And Kay got the most epic footage with that drone. Like that stop was crazy. So then we're like, okay, well, where are we going to go for lunch? Because a lot of places were closed because there, as we got to that area, was really off season. And where we are going to be going, Tom had told us that a lot of the restaurants close in Lazerne at like 2 p.m. on a Monday. So I'm like, okay, so let's find something. So we're just driving. We're driving along the lake the whole way, along the lake, along the lake. All of a sudden, Tom spots people sitting outside at the most beautiful outdoor spot on the water. And I'm like, is it open? He stops. He backs up. It's open. Just randomly found something. This is the magic of having a personal driver and going somewhere off the beaten path 
forgetting about the plane and the train part of the exercise, but going for the automobile because these were things that we would never see and maybe never have the opportunity to see again. So we sat there, we had a remarkable lunch. We watched some people taking their boats out. We just had a great conversation, got to know Tom more, really, really, you know, getting to hear his history more and, and all of it was just so spectacular. And then from there, it was about another 40 minutes to get to Luzerne. And as we enter through this village and get to Luzerne, we're just on the coast kind of the whole way and seeing everything. It was spectacular. We got into that hotel, which was a marvelous hotel. Now, I will admit myself to be a bit of a hotel snob. Currently, I'm in a Holiday Inn, which does not truly satisfy the hotel snob in me, but I understand for work events when places are booking a hotel and they're booking a large group of people that they get a better deal at a hotel. It is what it is, right? It's a work thing. But when it's on my time, on my dime, you better believe we stayed at the Grand Hotel National Luzerne. The bar inside the Grand Hotel National is 172 years old. It was fabulous. Everything about the hotel from the guest bathrooms, if you were to be in the lobby, to just the detail, how immaculate it was. We had a beautiful little terrace we'd sit out. Like everything, so worth it. That was what I was like, okay, this is, this is Europe. This is how they do. This is amazing. You go to the bar, there's like 12 canisters of glass jars of like different snacks. So when you sit down for a drink, you can have dried fruits or you can have nuts, or you can have chips or because everywhere except America, when you order a cocktail, they also would like to feed you, which makes you not get as drunk, which is so nice. A little snacky snack does good. And so you're always noshing on something, just a little something. So you're not as starving when you go to eat. So it's super excited to be at this hotel. So Interlaken was a big thing that I really wanted to do. And I knew that the train to Interlaken was going to be about two hours from where we were. Uh, and we were going to change trains about two and a half hours to come back. And the right back, there was a caveat that really, really changed the game. We'll get to that. The reason I want to go to Interlaken, because there's skydiving up there, paragliding up there, we did not know what we were going to be getting able to get into because, you know, weather uh, was going to drizzle a bit in the morning, but we're like, you know what, we're just going to go up there, we'll shoot some photos, we'll make a cool video for YouTube, like we'll create content, we'll have a great time, we'll get to see somewhere that who knows if we're going to get back to Switzerland. And if we do, uh, who knows if we'd get to discover this much of it. So we're dead set book the train. All right, we're going to go to Interlaken. So we get to Interlaken. We, we get up, uh, we hop on the first train, uh, do our little switch, get on the second train, get to Interlaken. It's just this really cool, beautiful, beautiful historic city. And when we get there, the first thing we notice is this beautiful green kind of park. And we're like, what is there? What is there? What is there at that park? And right away, Kay is like, got to fly my drone here. I got to fly my drone here. Well, it didn't take us long to realize that, uh, no, there would be no flying of the drone because fun fact, um, this is where they land for paragliding because we started to see them landing. So we're walking through the city to find our place of where we're going to walk in and ask about paragliding. We're just winging it. Once we got to interlock and we're just winging it. So we go to the visitor center and it's closed. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe they're on lunch break. Let's do this. Let's sit down and have a bite to eat. And by the time we're done eating, we'll ask the concierge at the hotel. So I, we ate at a restaurant that was at a hotel. As we order our food, I go to speak to the concierge and I said to her, you know, we really want to do paragliding. It looks like it's going to stop raining. You know, da, da, da. she's like, well, you should go to the visitor center. I said, I did. And they're closed. She's like, oh, they do that. Sometimes they close for lunch. Sometimes they don't reopen. But what you can do is if they don't reopen after you eat your lunch, you can go to that park and wait for one of those vans to come through. That's getting the guys that have just brought people down paragliding. You can just book it directly with them. So I'm like, okay, we've got backup plan on backup plan on backup plan. We had two of the best burgers like ever. Now, mind you, you know that I don't eat meat. Uh, I do eat a little bit of fish. 
in the US, but when I'm in another country, I'm a lot more comfortable eating a lot more things because I trust the regulations on food in different places more than I do in the US. And I'm always willing to try something and eat something that I would never be willing to try or eat in the US. So these massive burgers that came out and was like, would look like a cutting board. Fries are just dumped right on there. I'm like, okay, we're good and full. We're going to, we're going to eat this burger. And then we're, our quest will continue. We will find out about either skydiving or paraglide. So as we leave the restaurant, guess what? The visitor center is open and there is one spot left for paragliding. So I decided, okay, and I felt bad. I really wanted Kay to go, but Kay's like, you know what? I'll get to shoot your landing. Don't worry about it at all. Mind you, blessing in disguise that Kay did not go. Kay gets a little car sick, so I always make sure Kay gets to sit in the front with the driver and I sit in the back seat. Well, the drive up this mountain in this van that was stick shift on these narrow roads that went like this and like this and like this and like this that we had to pull over onto the side of a very steep cliff when another car was coming down. I sent Kay a text. I said, no amount of drama I mean would have made you make it through this trip, but it was so worth it for me. We get to one spot and they get out and they're like, you know what? There's not enough wind. We're going to go up higher. We were uh, over 50. He said, I forget. It was over 15. So I don't want to say first he was like, okay, we're climbing a thousand feet in elevation. Then he's like, okay, we're going to climb up another 500 feet in elevation. And then he's like, okay, we're going to, so I, I should have taken notes in my phone, but I was looking out the window and just seeing where I just was down at the bottom of interlock and get a lot further away. So I was like, I just want to be looking out this window and really enjoying this, this getting up there. And finally we got up to the very top. And they're like, okay, this is the one of the fields we use. Looks like there's some decent wind. They go through the instructions. Here's what you do. You know, you just gotta run out, run out, run out. And then once we're once we pick up enough wind, you're gonna feel it. And you're just gonna feel yourself sit back down into the seat. And you know, the ride up there could make you more nervous than the actual excursion itself because the ride up that you're kind of thinking about it, and the road is windy, and the stick shift, and all these things are happening. But when I got up there, I had an awesome instructor, Richie, because, you know, someone someone rides with you. And, of course, he cracks the joke like all instructors do, like skydive. Like everything you do, they always say, you know, if, I'm, if something happens to me, you're on your own. Or when Kay and I visited Alaska and we took a private helicopter to a glacier, the pilot said, listen, if one of us falls in, do not go over and rescue that person because you're going to fall in too. So it was like, Richie's like, so if when we take off, I'm not with you, you're on your own. It's like that same joke, but it's always funny, even though they do it all the time. Still funny. So here we are, we're waiting for the wind to start. We waited about five minutes. They're watching the wind socks. There, there's two other people that are with us in our group. So a couple from Singapore, it was their first time. And we're so high up. Like I'm looking down at the city and I'm like, everything just looks like a mini toy set that would go around my Christmas tree with a train. Like, this looks crazy. So, okay. He's like, we're good. Let's start running. So it's like five steps. Like we run like five steps. And the next thing you know, just the feeling of coasting. And I mean, the air was so fresh and beautiful and smelled so good. And the view was incredible. And I could see the snow-capped mountains and I could see the sun setting over the water. It was the last trip of the day. It was around 3.30 by the time, maybe 3.45 by the time we got up the mountain. And just gliding and gliding and gliding for a beautiful 20-minute ride above Interlaken, Switzerland. The fact that I got to have this experience makes me so grateful for everything in life. The fact that I have been fearless and remain fearless since Peggy, my neighbor growing up, called me daredevil when I was just a young girl. I never want to lose that because that's what makes me feel ageless, timeless. I'm 50 years old, but I don't want to act like I'm 50 years old. I want to do all the things I did when I was 40 and when I'm 30. Of course, I'm going to make better decisions. Of course, you know, that's obvious. But these are experiences that I've been able to have because of the choices that I made. And the choices that I made to be in the adult industry is something that many people will never understand. Most people will only think and judge and be negative towards me. And there's, there's two sides. There's the, oh my gosh, how could you? And then there's the creeper side, like, oh my gosh, I should be able to be with you. And there's this accessibility that's so disgusting and constant, especially when I'm traveling and people 
know I'm in their country and they send me a hundred messages on my comment section. I'd love to get together. Here's my WhatsApp. Stop. I'm traveling for me. I'm not traveling for you. I'm traveling for me. And then there's the other people that are just so blown away by the choices that I've made that I should be judged. I mean, Kay recently told me that there was a job that wouldn't work with her because Kay works with me. People are still that judgmental. But what people truly don't understand is the life that I've gotten to live by the choices that I made by getting into the industry and the fact that I'm still living, still parlaying only the best things. And the fact that I'm smart enough to say, I am not going to fly to Switzerland to just go to Ecstasia. I'm going to stay for a couple of days. I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to create content to share with all of my followers who may or may not ever get a chance to come to Switzerland. This is a gift. And this is something that I don't even think I was able to formulate in my brain that I'd be still parlaying these types of events and trade shows and appearances all over the world. Like, I don't think I even thought about it yet, but here I am because I did it right. I didn't burn bridges. I have kept my, my presence with my following. I've stayed true to communicating with people in different countries and networking and, and, and making myself available for things like this and for making myself really get out there and push the envelope by trying something that most people will never understand. I wouldn't be sitting in a Holiday Inn in Zurich after just traveling to multiple cities in this beautiful country of Switzerland if I wasn't Lisa Ann. And I know that. And I see it through my eyes. And my eyes see it as just an incredible amount of, oh, wow, this worked. I'm so grateful. This is so cool. I'm riding this wave. This is a now coast. And I still get to live my other life, my podcast, my sports radio. But the gift of travel is something that I am so grateful for. And I talk to a lot of people in the U.S. that have never been to Europe or never left the country or never been to Canada. And I've just go out there and see things and do things if you can. The world is big and beautiful. And it's such a gift to actually see it with your own eyes and soak it in and celebrate it and take pictures and remember it and pair a gliding over Interlaken, Switzerland. Like, boom, mind blown. So, the international edition of the Lisa Ann Experience has now come to a wrap. I wanted to share with you a little bit of the tour. You'll get more of it on my YouTube channel, The Real Lisa Ann. I'm so thankful for Just the Letter K to travel with me and, and, and create this awesome content at such a fast pace as well so we can share it with you immediately. And you know you're going to be getting a beautiful recap because this December I'm going to recap my year because after COVID, we didn't travel as much and now things are starting. I've done Exoticas this year. I'll be doing another Exotica December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th in DC. Uh, I, I've just gotten to get out and I've gotten to live again. And I love that when I get to do these things, I share them with my followers, my friends, my community. And it makes it so much more exciting that everything that I'm doing, that I get to share it with you, my community. So this was an awesome trip and tomorrow I will be back on U.S. soil and I just thought this podcast will not have the pop it would if I did it right here in this lime green room in Zurich at the Holiday Inn. So uh, wrapping this thing up, I appreciate all of you. Make sure you're following all of my social media at The Real Lisa Ann. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss an update. We'll be chatting it up on this. Now, mind you, when I land... In the States, I do radio all day on Friday. Friday night, I will be flying to Los Angeles to do my charity walk for the Walk to End Alls. I do this every year and I couldn't miss it, even though I'm going to be so wiped out tired. I landed in LA at like one, two o'clock in the morning. I'm going to get down to Huntington, do the walk in the morning, hopefully sleep hard Saturday night, but I'm going to catch up with some friends as well. Sunday, I'll be a big football day. I'm going to do my YouTube, the hotel room, which will be at eight o'clock in the morning instead of 11 o'clock in the morning, but I've got this. Uh, I, it's going to be another bit of a whirlwind. So I thought this would be a great way to wrap it up. I thank all of you so much for listening to another episode of the Lisa Ann Experience. Mm -hmm.